Okay, I'll call this meeting to order at 7 o'clock. First item up, adoption of the agenda. Any questions, any additions? If not, if I could have a motion to accept. I'll make that motion. Councilor Sloshberger. All in favor? Carried. Regular meeting, January 28th. I got nothing to say, but I wasn't here, so. <laughs> was it okay? Well I, run. I think it was all, really was all great. Yep. It's all, all up. It's all rode up, right? It's all rode up, right? Have you bet? I did. That is good. One of the most professional we've had. Yep. <laughs> I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. All in favor? <laughs> Carried. You guys, I think it's really all under a bus in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bylaw 1659. Water and sewer utility bylaw. And Blair, you're up. All right. Um, the current water and sewer utility bylaw has been in place since uh, 2008. Uh, it hasn't changed in uh, about 11 years. Uh, since this time, there's been a number of uh, practices um, that have changed and are not properly reflected in the current bylaw. Um, and so administration has taken uh, this opportunity to review the bylaw and, and uh, make some updates. Some of the updates include uh, just referencing Claris Home Servicing Standards for minimum service size and those types of things, uh, rather than specifying them individually in the bylaw, um, as uh, some of them are outdated now. And this just helps to future-proof the bylaw. Um, adding references to the Town of Claris Home MD of Willow Creek's um, water, servicing service, er, water and Sewer Servicing Agreement. Um, updating employee position titles. Uh, adding in an explicit time frame for water shutoff due to non-payment of utility bills. Um, adding additional restrictions on sewer discharge, including grease or fat, wet wipes, and hygiene products that are known to cause sewer line blockages and problems. Um, as well as uh, removing charges for services that are no longer permitted. Things like external spigots, uh, private wells, unmetered connections. Uh, we don't allow those anymore, so remove those charges from the from the schedules, um, as well as uh, updating and increasing fine and servicing rates. Uh, things for, like uh, rates for the repair of damaged damaged meters, um, they cost a lot more than they did uh, 11 years ago to, to fix. Um, and then uh, there's also an amendment uh, to the rate structure and and rates. Um, the rates haven't been changed since uh, May of 2013, so it's been about six years since. Uh, rates have changed um, and uh, as you can imagine uh, costs of operating are, are always increasing. Um, there will be an open house on February 28th um, at 6.30 at the golf course to, to go through this uh, um, rate restructuring uh, in more detail. Um, but unless you have any other uh, specific questions on that, I'll, I'll leave that uh, for that time. And so then the, the attached water and sewer utility by, by law has been reviewed by the Audit and Finance Committee, and uh, they have recommended to Council uh, this bylaw for first reading. Okay, questions? Clarifications? It's got to get done, got to get up to well, pace. I think with uh, it. we will talk more at the open house. And what was the date of that? Uh, February 28th at 6.30 p.m. At the golf course. Six thirty. Yep. Better. I know it's in my calendar. I just want it in more than one place. Uh, some of the stuff. A lot of the information will come out. Uh, one of the reasons the rate structure is being looked at is the money we're losing each year. I'd like to address that just a little bit for sure tonight, for these counselors. Yeah. So um, just looking at uh, the um, cost of uh, supplying water, treating and supplying water. Um, per cubic meter, um, just looking at the actual just treatment of it, not even the transmission and distribution of it, uh, it costs us about uh, 98 cents per cube. Um, and right now our consumption rate uh, beyond the basic consumption is only 80 cents per cube. Um, when you add in T and D, uh, you're looking at about $1.39 per cube. Um, and when you add in amortization, you're looking at over $2 per cube. Um, so we're, we're nowhere near that. So we've been falling steadily behind the last few years. Yeah. <coughs> Any other questions or 
talked to quite a bit about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think it'll be great at the open house. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay, if somebody is willing to make a motion for the first reading of bylaw 1659. I'll make that. Councillor Carlson. Question, please. Moved by Councillor Carlson to get bylaw number 1659, the water and utility box, water, oh gosh, <laughs> water and sewer utility <laughs> bylaw first reading. All in favor? Carried. Item two. The Honorable Shay Anderson, Minister of Municipal Affairs, Alberta Community Partnership, the ACP program. Blair. Uh, so the town of Staveley um, had put forward a uh, ACP grant application um, to help fund the uh, intermunicipal development plan so that uh, we are doing um, as a um, as five, ur five urbans and um, the MD. Yeah. Um, and so they put forward this application for a total of $46,000, um, and it was approved. Um, now that should cover, I think, 100% uh, or nearly 100% of, of, it. of that, uh, that project for all five urbans <coughs> and the MD. Right on. Oh, good. That's okay, cool. Just take that for information. Well, thank you, Steve Lee. Yeah, good work. Well, it was, a, it was an agreement between all of us who would apply for it. And it was a joint effort. We were, our names were all on it, and that's the reason it probably went through is because it was a partnership. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, thanks to all involved then. <laughs> okay, number three, Correspondence Police Act Review Team Municipal Indigenous Community Survey. Blair. Um, so they're just, uh, um, the provincial government is looking at the Alberta's uh, Police Act. Um, so they, uh, the Alberta Police Act was legislated in the 1980s. Uh, and since then, policing approaches and roles um, have changed, obviously. And so they're just uh, looking for uh, some uh, response from uh, municipalities, um, indigenous uh, communities, and, and uh, others there. Um, they are also uh, meeting with the uh, AUMA and RMA um, on this as well. Uh, they're just asking um, uh, elected officials as well as uh, administration to um, to go online and, and uh, go, uh, complete the survey that's online there. There's the link in your agenda package to go and be able to do that. The survey is open until uh, February the 16th. That's uh, the end of this week. Okay, we'll take that for information. Number four, correspondence. Alberta Urban Municipalities Association, the AUMA. Coordinating our municipal voice, hmm. responsible res resource development. This is for direction for the government for future. So this is uh, AUMA um, is looking to to try to um, basically uh, get uh, a group of, of people to um, basically uh, get this unified unified voice on uh, resource. Um, resource development. So they're basically looking to, um, in talking with uh, different uh, groups, they came up with kind of three uh, goals that they're trying to accomplish here. Um, advocate for responsible resource development, ensure municipal perspectives are being heard on issues impacting resource development, and share factual information regarding resource development interests. Um, so the AMA uh, president is meeting with uh, some of the sister municipal uh, associations across Western Canada. Um, to discuss forming a Resource Communities of Canada coalition um, to unify these activities um, and uh, basically just trying to give you some information on that and, and get you, um, I guess, on board um, with that. Okay, we'll take that for information at this time. Number five, correspondence, AUMA again, the Spring 2019 Municipal Leaders Caucus. This will be in Edmonton, it usually is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's in Edmonton. Um, we usually don't send anybody to this one, just for the cost of it. Once mm -hmm. a year to go to those conventions, I feel is enough. Um, anybody want to speak on that? Or? This is more for mayors and Well, Reeves it used to be just mayors and Reeves and CAOs, but they've expanded it to include councillors last year. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, if you're okay with it, we'll just take it for information at this time. All right. Number six, correspondence. Action on smoking and health. 
Uh, let me find it here. There it goes. Uh, we are nominated for a Smoke Free Spaces Award in Edmonton. At their uh, the presentation is February 21st. I mean, it's wonderful that we're being recognized. It's because of all the work that was done because of the cannabis. We changed our smoking bylaws. We brought on all the cannabis laws. And so because we changed our smoking bylaws and, and uh, we, we drastically enhanced them, mm -hmm. yeah. that's why we were, we're up for this award. Um, I don't think personally it's worth spending the money to send one of us all the way to Edmonton to receive that, but uh, the timing doesn't, doesn't work for that. Timing doesn't work. No, no. It's, it's at noon. Oh. Well, you see yeah. the new guys <coughs> out there taking some courses, and I was hoping it would, but it doesn't correlate. So okay, I think we'll just send him a letter, and if uh, administration could send him a letter and say we just can't attend. Sure. But thank you very much. Send one of the smokers up to get it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you out. <laughs> Go team. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there was the first boss. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, number seven, Correspondence Farm Safety Center. Request for donation. Uh, we do this yearly, except for one year they, they neglected to send us the form. But uh, we do this year yearly. We give $300. It goes to the schools, and it teaches farm safety, but uh, just general safety also. And I think it's a good program. Well, uh, do you guys got anything to say about it? Or? I just did have a question why we didn't do it for three years. Like it says, like we went to 2013, 2014, then all the way to 2018. Well, I'll tell you, actually, the, the reason it was missed was because these forms that have to be filled out were brought on. Oh, and okay. The people that were coordinating the fundraising weren't willing to fill out the forms. Well, the people have changed now. Last year they changed, and the new people are willing to fill out the forms, so okay. they're okay. back getting the money. It was not a town choice not to give them it. Just right. they, yeah. so they, just, they just didn't request it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, any I think other, it's a any questions? Program. Blair is full of information. <laughs> 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 no, they provided a lot of stats and information with their package yes, about they what did. they so does if, each. If, uh, some, if, it, if it looks okay, if somebody's mm -hmm. willing to make a motion that we uh, approve. I'll make a motion that we Counselor donate. Councilor Cutler already did her there. You don't just raise your hand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Craig. Question. Moved by Councilor Cutler to support the Farm Safety Center's delivery of the Safety Smarts program to children in Clare's home schools in the amount of $300. All in favor? Very. Number eight. Correspondence, Alberta Southwest Regional Alliance Economic Resilient Training, April 11th, I believe it's in <coughs> Port McLeod. Yep. Yep. Um, actually, Brad. Yep. You're on that committee. You want to speak on this? Uh, it's just a follow-up to the EDC training that Keith, Councillor Carlson, and Cutler, and I attended. It's a follow-up to that. I already told Bev I was attending, so well, I, think it's, I think it's well worthwhile. So, and yep. we don't need a motion to send people. So, um, if you could, anybody who wants to go, let Corrine know, sure. and then uh, we'll get her book to get you registered. And we'll take it for information. Number nine, request for decision: Peace Officer Vehicle Upgrades. Blair. Um, so for the last uh, few years, we've had a CPO2 officer. Um, CPO2s aren't able to do uh, traffic uh, or moving violation uh, tickets, so uh, speeding tickets and whatnot. Um, the town has uh, hired a new uh, bylaw officer that uh, we are currently training to become a CPO1, um, and so they will. Therefore, we will be able to uh, issue our own uh, traffic tickets, uh, moving violation tickets. Um, our current vehicle, however, um, needs some upgrades to be able to do that. Uh, we had a CPO one in the past, uh, so we still have a lot of the old equipment, uh, radar and, and uh, siren and whatnot, but they aren't uh, currently installed in this vehicle. Um, as well as uh, the lights on this vehicle are, are very low profile, um, so they're difficult to see from the rear of the vehicle. Uh, so um, the upgrades would just include uh, adding in a light bar in the rear window 
um, adding in uh, red and blue side mirror lights, um, headlight flashers, and then the installation of the equipment that we already own, uh, radar unit, siren speaker, grill lights. Um, and then uh, the, a large ticket item is to, to add in um, watch guard in its, uh, a front camera and a back seat camera, as well as a wireless mic that the uh, peace officer would wear. Um, so this just helps provide uh, safety um, to the officer, as well as uh, it's becoming more and more um, considered as just standard equipment for, for RCMP <coughs> police officers. Um, a lot of the uh, judges now, even if uh, um, you go to, to fight the ticket, uh, if the officer doesn't have that recording, uh, they won't even look at it. They'll just throw it out. Um, so to do all of the upgrades, not including the, the watch guard, um, is about uh, $3,000. 3, um, adding in the, the watch guard uh, system, um, it increased that to about $10,500. Um, so there's kind of two options here. One is, is to just uh, um, not do the upgrades until next year, have our, our new uh, bylaw officer just kind of focus on bylaws this year and, and wait till, till next year um, to the 2020 budget. Uh, to be able to do this, um, or the other option is we do have a capital reserve for the bylaw enforcement vehicle. Uh, there's about uh, eighteen and a half thousand dollars sitting in that reserve fund right now, um, and so we could uh, fund those upgrades out of that reserve. Uh, this did go uh, to the um, the facility and infrastructure planning committee or FIPSI committee, um, and FIPSI has uh, recommended that we do move forward with the upgrades now. Uh, and fund those out of the capital reserve. Questions? Who Comments? installs the equipment? <coughs> um, it is... It's a company in Calgary, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I can't remember what it's I called. I can't remember either, but it's a company in Calgary. It specializes in it. You used to have to, uh, not that many years ago, you had to send them to Edmonton. It was the only place. <laughs> but now, there's one in Calgary. Um, would you know that projected revenue from the... No, that's not something to bring into this discussion. No. That's something that to bring into the discussion of getting a CPO in place. This is this is about the vehicle he's going to drive. But I just thought if it's worth it, if he's... If it's well, there will be... A, I mean, they will be bringing in revenue, but it's just starting. It's too early to project. I mean, we did put a number in the budget, did we not? Uh, we did. I don't remember what that number was. I, I want to say it's somewhere it. around uh, twenty thousand. Yeah, because um, it's a, it's a short season. I mean, he's not going to get to start until he's fully integrated into our system. So that's a couple of months away. Yeah, and uh, receiving the the ticket revenue is also usually a fairly slow process. It's mm -hmm. uh, if anybody decides to fight the ticket or whatever else, it can be over a year before we actually see the revenue from a ticket uh, issued. And the town will have to have. A lawyer on standby for those tickets at all good times, and they're, they're, it's pretty involved to to answer that question right at this time. Yeah, it's more important that we, we get somebody out there visible because as soon as they're visible on the highway, it slows down. But yeah, these upgrades allow him to do his complete that allows job. him to do his job. Safely, that we're getting him trained safely. Safely, yeah. 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 sort of mine. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> it's, not a, it's not a big dollar, right? Right, right. We have the budget. Mm -hmm. But project revenue right now, I think, it's it's, uh, it's too preliminary for us to do that. <coughs> Any other questions? You look like you want to say something more, Gavin. I had another question and I forgot it. I took the count number. It's more important that we just not that it's. A revenue generator. It's mm -hmm. it's the fact that he's visible mm -hmm. and out there. The gentleman from Fort McLeod sat out. Davis, all day today. Oh, by it's the uh, tower. How slow people go by when there's a car there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the whole point. Like he was by the water tower, and it just slows yes. everybody down. Mm -hmm. Makes our highway because that highway is dangerous, but it makes them slow down and yeah. safe. Yeah. And they don't know when he's coming. So when we have a full-time one, he'll be out there at odd times. Mm -hmm. So they, they'll they get in the habit of not speeding. It's like 
It's like Fort McLeod. They yep. got they had two uh, and so did Nanton for a while. Two CPOs, mm -hmm. and everybody so nobody speeds through Nanton or Fort McLeod. <laughs> <No. clears throat> I remember my question. Um, okay. The watchdog camera and my it's um, <clears throat> just you just need one. Well, there's only need to just, um, you need to ask questions this way. Yeah. Ask me, not sorry. Um, yeah, the just, camera's uh, for like the it's officers. a one-time. It's not going to be a yearly. Oh, it's another two thousand this year. No, no, it's, it's an installed. It's year. a permanent camera. It's a system. If it's like the RCMPs in the trunk of their car, every shift, it tells you when your CD is empty or if it's getting close to full. It's just this box that's protected in the trunk of their car. And you open it up, you unlock it, you throw a CD in there. It's just like and making a movie. And it records it. Yeah, and every time they flip their lights on, it automatically goes to record, and then you have your wireless mic. So it records what's going on outside, in front of you, behind you, and what you speak. And then if you have to go to court, every time you flip it on and make a thing, it's in your book, you can go back to see which CD that was, hmm. and it's all cataloged, and you can pull that out and enter that as your evidence. Oh, it's pretty. It, it's, it makes it a safer job. If you ever watch sure. those police shows, like Cops, those those real life ones, yeah. all those videos are coming from this type of machine. It's just so as <clears throat> the officer knows that he's you know he he's got a recording of it. He's protected to a point. Mm -hmm. Do our RCMP officers have the same? Mm -hmm. yes. They have it. Yeah. 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 Like the city of Calgary is going one step further because they've got a lot of foot patrols and they're going to the cameras they're actually wearing. Uh, mm -hmm. So, any other questions? Anybody interested in making the motion? Councillor Schlossberg. Question, please. Moved by Councillor Schlossberg to approve the out of budget and expenditure to upgrade the bylaw enforcement <coughs> slash peace officer vehicle. To a maximum of ten thousand five hundred dollars to be funded out of the bylaw enforcement vehicle capital reserve fund. All in favor. Carried. <coughs> Number ten, request for decision. The EV charging station. Clear. Mm -hmm. Um, so, administration requires a, a motion of council to accept a proposed agreement with Atco Power um, in order to grant them a license uh, to install, maintain, repair, and operate an EV station or electronic, or sorry, electric vehicle supply equipment station within the town of Clarison. Um This was uh, recently discussed at the uh, Facility and Infrastructure uh, Planning Committee, uh, FIPSI, on uh, February 7th. Um, oh. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to step. Sorry, oh. I didn't see you waving your hand there. It's all good. You don't have to leave the room. You just got to go. Yeah, I'll hang out here. It's just, it backs onto my property. So. Sorry, I didn't catch that. No, oh. that's okay. <coughs> <coughs> if we could record that uh, Councillor Carlson indicated there may be a slight conflict, so he chose to leave the table. Um, so this has been a uh, discussion that's been ongoing for some time uh, for an electric car charging station to be installed in Clarison. Uh, this is part of the uh, Peaks to Prairies uh, uh, system that uh, you may have uh, seen some advertising on. Um, so this was a, a group with re representatives from South Grove, Alberta Southwest, City of Medicine Hat, City of Lethbridge, and the City of Calgary. <coughs> Um, they've all uh, been part of this group. They've all uh, reviewed this agreement, um, had uh, different legal counsel uh, review the agreement. Um, and this uh, 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 version of the contract has been reviewed and, and vetted by, by all of those um, parties. Uh, so in this contract, basically, ATCO is responsible for um, all the costs and expenses associated with the construction, alteration, installation, and utility power connection. Um, operation repair and maintenance of the EV stations, uh, all customer service issues and signage identifying the EV chargers um, with our mutual consent as to where they go. Um, they must hold, or ATCO must hold insurance including the town, um, include, and include the town as an additional insured, uh, as well as they must remove the EV station if the agreement is terminated or provide an opportunity for the town to take ownership of it. The town's responsibilities are to construct, maintain uh, the lighting and repair of two parking stalls, 
and provide those stalls free of charge, as well as maintain the lands where the EV stations are located, and to also hold insurance and include ATCO as an additional insured, and any off-site or underground repairs to return the land to its original condition if the agreement is terminated. And then there is a um, clause in the contract, uh, any disputes or, or uh, decision-making um, or problem solving, if ATCO and the town cannot come to a mutual agreement, it will go to this uh, uh, board that's made up of re representatives from the City of Calgary, South Grove, Alberta, Southwest, City of Lefford, and said, City of Medicine Hat, and the Medicine Hat College. Um, and uh, if it can't be agreed at that point, then there is an out clause for, for either party. And so um, there is also a map in your package there of uh, the FIPSI committee had proposed a, a number of possible locations. Um, the, the location that uh, um, ATCO likes best is, is number one there on the map. Um, they're uh, right along the highway um, there on the north side of uh, uh, Roy's Place. Um, that parking lot is owned by the town. Um, and that uh, location has the least uh, amount of um, work to, to provide power um, to that, that spot. Their number two location is on the opposite side of that parking lot, uh, closer to the museum there where there's the, currently the handicapped uh, stalls. Uh, but there is, would be a quite a bit of uh, um, uh, underground uh, laying of, of wire to, to utilize that location. That is the power source, the the yep. lightning yep. bolt. Yeah. We can't have it in that corner though. It's no, too close. They, they've given their selection. That's it. I attended the tour <clears throat> that we did with Brady, uh, Atco, Mike, Schuller, and their number one choice is those first two stalls because it's such a short distance to wire. Mm. And there's grass. Personally, I like two better. Mm. But me too. But mm. then that takes away your handicap part of the museum. It was brought up about the handicap parking, but we thought we could do that on the other side. Okay. But the other side though is too far away from like this is museum parking, so <laughs> Yeah, if you, if you took the handicap and moved it to the other side of the parking lot, it's not very efficient. Right. <coughs> Just I northbound know, traffic's not going to see that. Number no. one. I guess it depends on signage. If we put it out. Yeah. These stations, oh, I don't know a whole lot about the plugins. Like, I know the ones down in Fort McLeod or Tesla. Can you only charge Tesla cars on those, or yeah. can you charge all? Just Tesla. Okay, so Tesla. these ones that they're pr proposing, are we locked to just one brand, or can we get multiple mm -hmm. brands charging well, they, on they them? take everybody, because Tesla comes with an adapter, so they'll be able to plug into these. Oh, okay, so mm -hmm. they've got their own. So it doesn't matter what kind of electric vehicle they have, they can charge there. Yeah, they'll be able to charge. The <laughs> Tesla ones are part of the contract. When you buy a Tesla, you're guaranteed free power so far apart across North America. That's why they're putting in that chain of them. Oh, okay. I just wasn't sure if they were different plug-ins or... They are different plug-ins, but Tesla's come with the adapter so they can plug into a standard one and everybody else takes, apparently... I asked that question, that's why I oh, okay. didn't answer. The rest of them take a standard plug. Because they wouldn't want to have a... bugger up two stalls just for... One two percent of the population of cars that can only charge on there, but if anybody who's got an electric vehicle can utilize that, and they would have like a, a map or a Jeep, anybody who right. has an electric car would know that there's one in Claire's home, right? It's not like it needs to be epically advertised because and are we sure like those users are going to spot number two is handicapped parking? No, yes. the two beside it are handicapped, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so there'll still be those two handicapped. So, oh. Yeah. I was going to say, because I park there all the time. <laughs> oh, do you? You're one of Where number two is. Right, because it looks well, like those two stalls. you can actually see the blue. Yeah. yeah. No. <coughs> oh, okay. <laughs> There's so, actually better lighting there, too. Already. Yeah, right well, now. and the visibility part that Brad mentioned makes perfect sense. And Me too. the reason I was told number one's a better site is because there's grass access to get it, and you don't have to cross anything. <coughs> 
Well, you can grass access. The, the transformer obviously is where that thunderbolt is. So you've got to yep. cross the same pavement and go over. And as far as that little sidewalk, they can push underneath that sidewalk. That's not a hard trick. I've got equipment for that. Mike's got equipment for that. No. They, where are you at? You're thinking going around? Well, I'm thinking of just keep two grass. Well, keep. just the route they're taking to get the power over to number two, they thought was uh, more we invasive. Looked, we looked at both going across the pavement yeah. and going down the grass, yeah. across. It's probably twice as far, but easier to. But, but the one other argument they got in there is um, there's mature trees along that east side, and if they damage the roots, we could lose those trees. So was it worth putting it over on number two and risking losing those trees? Or go across the pavement. Well, going, we're going across the pavement no matter what they do. Yeah. Oh, so, you mean go? Yeah. yeah. That's a lot more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> patching pavements, patching pavement, it'd be, it would be quite a bit more. But if number two is the choice that we all prefer, I mean, that's what we're going to do. We also looked at the downtown parking lot. <laughs> the problem with that is they like, the vehicles have to park straight in. Oh, not angle park because because every maker the outlets on a different side oh. front or back or front fender back fender so you have to be able to you have to be able to adapt to yeah the situation. she said this is a <laughs> <coughs> plus no lighting cars. Hmm? how many people are going to have electric cars there's a few <laughs> you mean it's more just, and more i guess i have no idea how many but <laughs> I know they're getting more prevalent. Must be, must be. Like you go into the States and you see them everywhere and I mm. guess that is headed this direction. Red Deer mm. has, he told, or she told us. It's like 2%, but it's, it's still it's a, coming. That's it's a substantial coming. number, 2% of the cars. It's going to come. That's a big number. No, interesting. So two? Uh, and I prefer to, I mean, not that you ever see anything horrific on anywhere like that. I think one's too close to the business that's there. Yeah, me too. Well, for and the they sake. agreed that right. it's close enough that downtown that if people want to charge, and they'll go right. downtown. It's not at least, at least two's in the middle of a... Well, if we went with two, as far as their routing of the wire, there. we could change yeah. that too. We can, because we own the right of way behind those trees. So come out into the right of way, clear of those roots, come around it, and go around them. And then there was worry about the irrigation in the, uh, but irrigation is the simplest of all things to yeah. fix when it comes to underground. That's just a plastic pipe. You can hit it, and patch it, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> and pushing that sidewalk is no big deal mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. I like to. Oh, Blair. Yes. Just one comment. Uh, it is a, quite a large unit. I don't know if, if there's any concern of, of it being an eyesore or anything else there um, in spot two. Uh, there's nothing really else around there, whereas in spot one, it'd be kind of hidden by the building. So that's the point they were pushing that hidden. If we're going to be visible. Yeah, no. I just, uh, it is quite a large uh, unit yeah. that, that sits there in front of those parking spots. Is it, is it nice looking? Yes. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I mean those ones in the cloud, they're sure they're yeah. in the open, but they're these are blue, and fancy white, looking, and they they are large, but and the but fast like what eight feet? No. I don't know. And their fast charges, it depends on the temperature outside. Like today, it's going to take an hour. In optimal temperature, twenty five Celsius, twenty minutes, twenty wow. to thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. quick. For a fast charge. Cool. But the hotter, colder, longer it takes. Hmm. Thanks. Okay. Is somebody willing to make a motion in one direction or another? I'll make, a motion. I'll make a motion. We prefer number two as the location for the Well, it's a. The motion we need is actually to approve the, the agreement along nice. with right. the location. Yeah, so the location is the part you're changing. So, Karina will have it all wrote down. Thank you. <laughs> Question. 
Moved by Councilor Schlossberger to approve the license agreement with ADCO Power 2010 Limited as presented and to approve option one from the proposed location. Option, or option two. two, sorry, from the proposed locations. I have two typed up, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> from the proposed location. Perfect. Okay, let, let's hear it one more time so we're clear. Yeah. Moved by Councilor Schlossberger to approve the license agreement with ADCO Power 2010 Limited as presented and to approve option two from the proposed locations. All in favor? Carried. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite Councillor Carlson back to the table. Uh, I'm comfy. I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we could note that uh, Councillor Carlson rejoined the Craig. group. Yeah. Craig. Craig. Number 11, request for decision financial plans. Claire? Uh, so part of the uh, recent changes with the MGA um, is that there is now a requirement to have operational and capital financial plans. Um, so you must have uh, operational plans that are uh, three years beyond the, the current year um, and capital plans that are five years beyond the, the current year. So we're looking at a financial plan for 2020 through 2020, 2022 and capital plans from 2020 through to 2024. Um, these plans uh, must not only detail the expenditures, but also the revenues, uh, so these plans must be balanced. Um, so these operational financial plans uh, were prepared by uh, first entering those uh, numbers that we know uh, three years out, uh, things like our debt repayments and, and those types of things. And then just uh, with um, the different uh, heads of, of departments going over line by line what items we expect to increase or decrease or, or stay the same over the next three years and, and by how much, whether it's a 1%, 2%, increase, decrease, whatever. <coughs> um, and uh, that plan was uh, then, some adjustments were made to, to reserves and whatnot to, to balance those budgets, um, and those were presented to the Audit and Finance Committee. Um, and then the uh, capital plan, uh, we just looked at, uh, um, again, with uh, the priorities of council as well as administration analysis um, and recommendations on life or replacement of, of our different capital assets, uh, looked at the different priority capital projects, uh, plotted those out over, over the next five years and determined what funds we have available to be able to fund those. Um, there are a number of projects that were identified that uh, we weren't able to find funding for at this time that were uh, just kind of pushed off into an un unfunded uh, column. Uh, so they're not included in the five-year capital plan, but they are being left in the document just to, to keep them on our radar in case priorities change or funding becomes available. Um, and that uh, capital plan did go to the uh, Facility and Infrastructure Planning Committee. Um, and uh, the Audit Finance Committee did recommend the, the three-year operational plan uh, to Council for approval, and the FIPSI Committee did uh, um, recommend the capital plan to Council for approval. Any questions for Blair? Well, if I could get a motion for the three-year financial plan. I'll make it. Councilor Schultz. Question. Moved by Councilor Schultz to adopt the 2019 <coughs> three-year financial plan as presented. All in favor? Carried. And I'll make a motion to adopt the 2019 five-year plan as presented. Question. Moved by Councillor Zimmer to adopt the 2019 five-year capital plan as presented. All in favor? Carried. Item 12. The Council Youth Program. Councillor Slotberger, <coughs> you brought this forward. Do you want to speak to it? Um, there's been three or four communities that I found that have youth sitting at the council table, being involved, not having a vote, not being in camera, but being involved. Uh, Elkford Sundry, I believe it's Spruce Grove, and the mayor of Crow's Nest Pass and a councillor from MD of Pincher Creek attended a convention in Fernie, and there was 
40 presentations at the, at the convention, and the young lady from Elkford was the <coughs> best of the 40 presentations. Hmm. Future politician. <laughs> she, those two gentlemen were very impressed, and both are going to look at instituting the plan in the Crow's Nest Pass and the empty of Pincher Creek. I thought it was a good idea. Of course, I only see the pros. I wanted some discussion to get everybody's feeling, pros and cons. So would you go to the high school and see if there's any students that are <coughs> interested in learning municipal legislation or governance yeah. at all? Yeah. Would your resource be FCSS? to go find those people? Yep. And Councillor Cutler. He teaches lifecom.com, right? Yeah. yeah. With yeah. Allison from SESS. With the other different groups within so, the organization. Within the town. But so I, I'm just reading this Elkford policy. I mean, it reads out there that they could apply for the senior one or for the junior program and then those types of things that they apply. And then if you get four or five applicants, you just pick two or you Mm -hmm. it, or one or whatever we would decide to have the table. Um, I know that the federal government was looking at implementing a program like this too. Mm -hmm. Don, Mr. Barber spoke to it a bit too, that they're looking to implement some form of bringing the youth into the politics and, and then giving them a voice and letting them understand and take it back to their to their group and then mm -hmm. informing people. So I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a very good idea. Mm -hmm. well, How have the other communities liked it so far? Sundry is extremely impressed. I think. Yeah. If you listen to their, or you read their council minutes. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to pursue this, if that's the indication from council, uh, we would need administration to come up with some guidelines and uh, some resources, such as your department or mm -hmm. FCSS and then bring back a, a general outline that we can uh, take a look at. So is, is your recommendation that we ask administration to go down that line? And yes, do they, please. Oops, sorry. We don't need a motion for that. We just, mm -hmm. this is an information session. So if you request uh, administration to pursue that, then we'll get something back in the next uh, couple of meetings. Yep. Is this something Great. that they can also work, um, oh, what was that called at school? I used to go to A and B automotivators when I was a kid. Work placement. Yeah. Something credit similar. Credit kind of a credit. Yeah, credit, credit, credit you could, experience. You could, you could, could you utilize this type of program for that? I would imagine. That's, that's done. That's cool to That's be, done in. Uh, oh, is it? Twice a year. Like you, you work for somebody for the first. So this is somebody sure you're looking for to nominate qualify. for a year. I don't know if this year. would qualify. Okay. Yeah. But I. I no, I'm just thinking just for. Spoke, I think it would qualify. I do. More incentive the, for the, the kids. Kind of but they would figure that out. You okay. know, I think they try to make it as amenable to the student as they could. Does so anybody see any cons, pitfalls? Uh, no. 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 Okay. Not if, as long as you're, I mean, not that you're hiding anything in camera, but I mean, they're not, they're, they're they're not, not in camera. Process. Process. They can't. Right. No. Yeah. Don't. They, they just be strictly yeah. public. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I think it sounds good. Well, we'll let administration come back with uh, some recommendations how we can uh, do a test oh, pilot on this. And uh, we'll look at it then. In the next uh, couple of council meetings, whenever administration can bring something back, it would be something that would be nice to put into effect for the next school term, because this one is going to be winding down yeah. soon. So yeah. it'd be perfect if we can get it in place for next September. And right. Well, I, I, I think it'd be great. It's Perfect. Well worth investigating. It's worth a shot anyway. Yeah. Number 13, information brief intermunicipal development plan. There. Um, so this is uh, again about the intermunicipal development plan. We talked about it a little bit before with the ACP grant that uh, Stately put forward and we received that, uh, or they received that grant funding. Uh, so um, with the uh, so this is again part of the, the changes to the MGA that have recently uh, occurred. Uh, it's now mandated through the, the Modernized Municipal Government Act uh, that uh, 
an IDP um, must be created with every municipality that, that your municipality borders. Uh, so we are mandated to have an IDP with the MP of Willow Creek. Um, it is part of the, uh, it's an integral part of the Intermunicipal Collaboration Framework, or ICF. Um, so basically it just looks at the, uh, the land use of, um, location of infrastructure and servicing areas within what is typically determined to be the fringe area. Uh, the portion or areas that border the, both municipalities. Uh, so here we'd be basically looking at uh, somewhere around one to two mile uh, kind of perimeter around uh, the, the town of Clare. So, um, so the, the IDP must address future land uses in the area, proposals for future development, provisions for transportation systems for the area, coordination of intermunicipal programs relating to the physical, social, and economic development of the area, as well as environmental matters. Um, so back in uh, July of 2018, Council passed a resolution to partner with the MD of Willow Creek and the five urbans within the MD of Willow Creek um, to work with the Old Man River, River Regional Services Commission uh, to prepare the IDP for adoption by Council. Uh, background work has been ongoing since that time, um, and ORSC is now at the stage of distributing questionnaires uh, to the residents in the MD that are that uh, live within or own land within um, the fringe area of town. Um, so once the results of those questionnaires are compiled, uh, background reports will be finalized by uh, ORSC and presented to each respective council for consideration and review. Uh, we expect to have those reports uh, for council in in late April or early May. Um, and then one of the important stages of the IDP process is uh, public consultation. Uh, so this will be done by way of an open house and it is proposed that the MD host the Clarison M, uh, MD of Willow Creek open house on June 12th uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the MD administration building. And the, the reason or main reason why it would be hosted at the MD uh, administration building is because it would be MD residents. <coughs> This is just an update, something we all are well aware of. Would their building be, is it big enough to host that? Mm -hmm. For the number of people that will show up, yeah. Okay. okay. <coughs> They've had some pretty good meetings there. Are they? I was just thinking maybe. Okay, any other questions for Blair before we move on? That was just information. Number 14, information brief. <coughs> for a street light investment. Blair. Uh, so we've received uh, numerous uh, different requests and, and recommendations from, as well as complaints from residents regarding the need for additional street lighting in town. Uh, complaints that there's a number of dark areas. Uh, so uh, council, as part of the 2019 budget, had uh, put aside some money to, to look at investing um, to, to try to address some of these problem areas. Uh, so administration uh, with the, uh, both the uh, infrastructure department and the bylaw department um, kind of looked around town at what different uh, priority dark areas were in town, trying to put together a, a plan of, of uh, where our dollars would be best spent, um, where the need was greatest. And we came up with a, a number of areas and we took those to Fortis to try to determine, you know, how much we could do with the, the amount of money that we were prepared to spend. And uh, basically Fortis came back saying that uh, they liked the recommendations of, of all the areas we were looking at and said that they would do them all. Um, so basically they're investing um, $271,635 uh, for these upgrades and they're only asking us to contribute $693. Oh, um, so I, was I was wondering if I read that right because I was wondering if there was so a, a mistake in there. But. Now there will be increased uh, monthly or annual costs uh, to the town for um, electricity and, and uh, T&D costs. Right. Um, estimated cost to the town would be about uh, $22.14 per light per month. So it's about uh, 24K annually uh, for an additional 91 lights. Mm -hmm. 24,000 24, yeah. 24, a year. A year wow. for an additional 91 wow. lights in town, which is a significant 91. number of lights. Wow, that's a lot. And so these uh, are mostly along kind of the outer areas of town, um, along 8th Street West, as well as 5th Street East. Um, there's quite a few along uh, 4th Street West, 
um, and along 3rd Street West, uh, south of uh, 51st Ave, um, as well as some on 59th Ave, um, and a few up uh, Alberta Road, up towards Tim's and, and there, as well as quite a few down along uh, 2nd Street East. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing needed here. This is the information brief. Yeah. It's quite the chunk of it's quite the undertaking okay. they mm -hmm. took on. Yeah. Number fifteen, information brief strategic plan report. Look. Um <clears throat> So I'm not sure, uh, wasn't prepared to necessarily go through this one. Um, basically, uh, um, let's see. So this is just kind of an updating uh, what administration has done over the last, since the last uh, two meetings ago um, on uh, what uh, um, council strategic plan, um, how that has progressed or what we've accomplished in this uh, last bit of time. Uh, so some of the uh, big things are the, the three-year and five-year uh, financial plans that we have just passed uh, today. Um, that uh, was one of the big things to, to meet the uh, current MGA uh, requirements. Um, also, we talked a fair bit today about the IDPs, their intermusical development plans and how those are progressing, <coughs> which is another uh, big piece of that. Um, as well as the, the ICF, uh, Intermunicipal Collaboration Framework. So um, we've had our second, administration has had their second uh, ICF meeting with the management from all five urbans and the MD. Um, and uh, um, things have been going uh, well there. We've been just kind of uh, collecting and identifying uh, the different um, agreements that are currently, currently in place and trying to, to document those. Um, and uh, we have our next meeting scheduled for, uh, it says on here February 5th, that's not correct because we're past that. Um, it's, uh, I believe, uh, in early June. Um, and then uh, the different finance uh, people uh, from the different municipalities are also meeting um, as a subgroup before that on March 21st. Um, the industrial um, area, we're still uh, awaiting um, our final report there from, from WSP. We haven't heard anything on that yet. Not that I'm aware of. They were, they were going along so well, and now they seem to be dragging their feet. Um, then uh, the stormwater infrastructure we have, uh, back in the fall we did apply for, the, uh, for a second ACRP grant. Um, we still have not heard on that and uh, not sure that we will prior to the election. Um, but the current project there, the first phase, um, is going well. Uh, um, Boss Gapes has been able to complete a lot of uh, work um, through the winter with the, the mild winter we had up until the last few weeks. Um, so things are going great there. And uh, yeah, um, the as mentioned earlier in the meeting, we do have uh, you know council was wanting uh, more regular uh, open houses and, and consultation uh, or public participation, uh, so we do have our next open house on February twenty eighth. Um, so that uh, will be to, to not only go over the uh, water and sewer utility bylaw that was mentioned earlier, but also to update uh, the public on the twenty nineteen budget. Good. Anything else you want me to touch on there? No, I think everything else is pretty good for now. Anything else that do you see there that we more information on? I think it's pretty clear. Yeah. Um, they've got all the uh, important parts. Okay, we'll move on to number 15. Or, sorry, number 16. Council resolution status, I mean, that's just for information. It shows all the resolutions made in the last month. 
adoption of information items. We have six information items. Are there any questions on any of them? Just a comment on Alberta Southwest. The AUDO plaque that Alberta Southwest received is only the second one in Canada ever given out. And the first one was in maritime somewhere. Hmm. Comes, hmm. comes from Washington. So. That's what they were talking wow. about. That. Pretty impressive. Very impressive. And what was the award for? Economic, Economic development. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. Go all the Southwest. Are there any other comments in there? Motion to adopt the information items. I'll make a motion to adopt the information items as presented. Councillor Zimmer. Question, please. Moved by Councillor Zimmer to accept the uh, information items as presented. All in favor? Carried. And could I get a motion to go in camera? Councillor Schultz. All in favor? Carried. Could we turn the camera off, please? Okay. Motion to come out of in camera. Councillor Schultz, all in favor of coming out of in camera? Motion to adjourn. Councillor Carlson, we are adjourned. Can we turn the camera off, please?